Easter's in full bloom at Whole Foods Market with great deals on spiral cut bone in ham and leg of lamb, both crowd pleasers. Round out your spread with quiche, deviled eggs, and delicious catering platters from prepared foods. Oh, and remember to pick up a Whole Foods Market bunny cake from the bakery. Strap for time? They cater too, with delicious options available without the effort. Find hundreds of Easter deals and delights now at Whole Foods Market. Dreaming of a better sleep? Tossing and turning is not your destiny. And Ollie is here to help. Ollie invites you to sink into sweet, sweet slumber to improve your mental and physical health and overall wellness. More than just melatonin, Ollie's ingredients help you unwind your mind for a delightfully dreamy drift off. Sleep is on the way at Ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2506. The Value of Confidence by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy middle of the week Wednesday and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily where I read some of the best health and fitness blogs to you and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. And on Wednesdays, I always like to share a little bit of inspiration with you. So with that, here's today's inspiration. Quote, It is not joy that makes us grateful. It is gratitude that makes us joyful. David Stendel Rast. All right, and now that we're in the right frame of mind, Let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. The Value of Confidence by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com Last night, I gave a speech called The Value of Confidence, which was about how to mentally put yourself into a state of confidence, feeling certain of success, even when your knowledge suggests you should expect to fail. Delivering a speech like this puts an extra burden on the speaker since it must be done with absolute confidence and certainty. Otherwise, the audience will easily detect the incongruency. Even if you're extremely skilled and talented, a lack of self-confidence can prevent you from performing at your best in pressure situations. For example, if you work in sales, it's one thing to read a book and learn and understand some new sales techniques, but it's a very different challenge to actually go out and apply those techniques when face-to-face with a prospect. The major limiting factor often isn't a lack of knowledge or practice, but rather the limiting belief that you can't expect to perform well the first few times, which would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Public speaking is a great example. Many people have the knowledge and skill to write a speech that an audience would enjoy, and when practiced in private, they may even do a decent job. But put them in front of an audience, or even suggest the idea, and they quickly succumb to feelings of self-doubt and worry. However, if you take such people to a stage hypnosis show and they're hypnotized, they'll get up on stage and perform wonderfully with no fear at all, even with no rehearsal or prepared material. Being under hypnosis doesn't magically bestow any new skills, but it can put people into a state where they have full and unrestricted access to their best internal resources. What new endeavors might you be able to take on if you were hypnotized to believe with absolute certainty that you would succeed at them? You may currently believe that confidence is the result of a history of success. While a history of success can certainly increase your confidence, you don't actually need that history to feel confident. Confidence is a feeling of certainty, a natural inner resource that can be summoned whenever you want it. The key to feeling confident lies in a quote from Albert Einstein. Quote, Imagination is more powerful than knowledge. End quote. Even when your knowledge tells you to expect failure, you have the ability to consciously direct your imagination to override that impulse and feel certain of success anyway. Most people let their imaginations run on autopilot, so they sometimes see themselves succeeding, but they also worry about failure. This is like trying to drive a car by pushing the accelerator and the brake at the same time. To feel confident, you must focus your mind to see only one outcome, the one of you performing at your very best. If you catch yourself worrying, meaning mentally rehearsing failure, you need to immediately take your foot off that brake and focus on the accelerator. No matter how many times you catch yourself worrying or contemplating failure, Just keep refocusing your mind on the image of success. 
In order to avoid the problem of overconfidence, let your decision to condition a state of confidence be subservient to your logic, reason, and common sense. If you feel confident that you will perform well on a big new project and use this as an excuse to underprepare, that's a mistaken application of confidence. But there are times when you've done all you can intellectually and now you need to get yourself into the most emotionally resourceful state possible. Whenever you have to perform under pressure is a good time to put yourself into a state of confidence. A speech, a sales call, an audition, an interview, an exam, and so on. So on the one hand, Be careful not to over-rely on confidence to save you by using it as an excuse to procrastinate on preparation. But on the other hand, it's amazing just how far confidence alone can get you. When I was going through college, I often didn't have as much time to prepare for exams as I would have liked, but I was really good at putting myself into a state of certainty of success right before the exam, regardless of how well-prepared I felt intellectually. And this state of confidence was often enough to allow me to perform well, even when I had barely studied the material. Because I expected to do well via my imagination, not my knowledge, my subconscious mind found a way to fulfill that vision. Often this came in the form of creative solutions. For example, if I took a math test and didn't remember the formula that was intended to be used to solve a particular problem, my subconscious mind would find an alternate way to solve the problem using what I did know. Because I was in a state of total certainty of success, I had the fullest possible access to all my internal resources, including the ability to solve problems in ways I wasn't consciously aware of. Confidence is not a panacea, but being able to make yourself feel certain of success can give you a massive edge in many endeavors. Confidence is often the deciding factor in making a sale, closing a deal, acing a test, nailing an audition, getting a date, being hired or promoted, or making the team. And a lack of confidence can put you into the decrepit state where even though you have the intellectual resources to succeed, you don't even make the attempt. You fail to ask for the sale, the raise, the date, and so on. Sometimes just summoning the confidence to ask is all it takes to achieve a successful result. What more could you accomplish if you added the tool of confidence to your arsenal of skills? consciously directing your imagination away from visualizing negative outcomes and 100% on creating a feeling of certainty of success. You just listened to the post titled The Value of Confidence by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com and I'll be right back with my commentary. When you're hiring, it feels amazing to finally close out a job search. But what if you could get rid of the search and just match? You can with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So, When you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash health. Just go to indeed.com slash health right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Many of us, before a big event, will feel nervous. And sometimes we interpret that nervousness as lacking confidence. But feeling nervous does not mean you lack confidence. It actually just means you care. You care about the result. Your body, when you're nervous, is trying to optimize your performance. 
Researchers like Dr. Kelly McGonigal have found that when we interpret feelings of stress and anxiety before, say, an exam or important presentation and think of them not as a lack of confidence, but instead as the body trying to help us perform better, it actually works for us that way. So the next time we feel nervous, instead of feeling like we don't have confidence, just remind yourself that this nervousness just means you care. And all the symptoms you're experiencing, like an increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, your pupils dilating, these are all things designed to help you perform better at whatever task is coming up. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here on tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits.